let me bless you. Let me bless you as we start off. I want to see God's breakthrough in your life and God's help in whatever situations you're in. So I bless you now in the name of Jesus that you would know Jesus more wonderfully. I bless you that you would be healed if you need healing in your body, in your mind, in your emotions, and in your spirit. I bless you to receive the guidance of God and the help of God in whatever your circumstances. I bless you to flourish and prevail in every challenge that you're facing right now. And I bless you to know joy, to know hope, to know peace, to feel love. I bless you with that. May that be true for you even right now in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. May it be. All right, family, welcome back to our series about prayer. We are uh, in a series that I am certain that if, if you are starting to apply and listen to the things that we're talking about, you will be seeing more and more definite and obvious direct answers to your prayers. When we look at the Bible and we see what Jesus says about prayer, we should be seeing more answered prayers. That, that's kind of what, what seemed obvious. It should work better. When Jesus prayed, things changed, and Jesus taught his disciples both how to pray and what they should expect when they prayed. That they were to expect that if they prayed like, to the Father in Jesus' name, that things would actually happen, that things would shift. God hears all prayers. God hears your prayers, and in case you can't put that together, God hears all your prayers. He hears all your prayers, but we, what we see clearly, clearly, clearly in the Bible is that although God hears all of our prayers, some prayers are vastly, are vastly more likely to be answered. Way, way more likely to be answered than others. And so that's my passion for this series, th that you go from here, wherever you are in the effectiveness of your prayer life, to seeing much more obvious answered prayers in, in your life. I think you need that. I think the people in your life that you're praying for need that. And so very passionate about that. When the disciples... When the disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray, again, they knew how to pray. They prayed all the time. They prayed more than, than we do. But what they wanted, just as a reminder, was they wanted to pray with the results that Jesus had. Because when they saw Jesus praying, things shifted. Situations changed. And they were like, Jesus, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. And when he did start to teach them to pray, he started by talking about structure. And he gave them an example of the Lord's Prayer, the structure of how to pray and the pieces that need to be in that. And we talked about that uh, two weeks ago. That's the first thing that Jesus taught when he wanted to teach them how to move from less effective prayers, just praying, to seeing answered prayers. He taught them structure and what pieces would be in them. But that's not all that he said when it came to prayer and how to move from here to there. And so over the next couple of weeks here, I'm going to be teaching you more and more how to be mighty in, in prayer. And again, I don't know where you're at today when it comes to prayer, but the vast majority of our generation needs to move away from prayer pacifism towards prevailing prayer, towards being mighty prayer warriors. You are here. You were called to be a mighty prayer warrior in our generation. And what is that? That is a person who prays and sees amazing God stuff happen. That, that's, that's, that's what we're called to be. People who pray and see amazing God stuff happen. A, a person who prays and sees things shift towards more goodness, more amazingness. Um, hopeless situations being restored and being made right and, and shifting. Prayer warriors know how to pray so that the situations around them change change for the better. And that's what I want us all to grow in and to become. Now, as I've said, there are five biblical reasons why prayers might go unanswered or why prayers might be delayed in their answering. And those five things are God's will, my faith, our faith, the free will of people, the free will of angelic free will beings, spiritual beings, and the spiritual war that's going on all around us, and the impact of that specifically when it comes to answered prayer. 
For the next several weeks, I'm going to be talking through each of these five potential delays and blocks when it comes to uh, answered prayer because as a prayer warrior who is looking for answered prayer for things to actually happen, um, I want you to understand what might be blocking that prayer of yours from being answered, what might be holding it back, and then I, I want you to know how to push through that. How, how, to, how to identify what's going on and, and what your next steps are to push through instead of just waiting, oh, it hasn't happened yet, I'm going to keep praying. I want you to know how to push through those blocks and those delays and see breakthrough coming. Now, it looks different based on um, exactly what's going on, but that's where we want to go. I want that for you because I want breakthrough th through in your life, and I want all the people in your life to get the joy of seeing God's goodness in their life because you're praying for them effectively and powerfully. All right. So the first potential delay or block to answered prayer is in the category we call God's will. God's will. And we see that caveat in the Bible. When, when the Bible speaks clearly that we should expect to receive all that we ask for in prayer, one potential reason that it does throw out there is it has to be in alignment with God's will. Again, 1 John chapter 5, we see it very clearly. Jesus, or John is speaking. John says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything... According to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked of him. Okay, pretty clear, but there is that caveat in there. According to his will, our prayers have to be in alignment with God's will. Okay, so we have two questions that we need to ask ourselves as we go through this. Number one, what is God's will? And secondly, how can I know if I'm praying in alignment with God's will? If we wanna be mighty prayer warriors, we need to know what God's will is and how can we know if we're praying in alignment with, with God's will? So we're gonna talk about both those questions, okay? Firstly, we need to talk about what is God's will? What is God's will? Now I'm gonna make a statement that will cause most of you to be instantly appalled and want to scream heretic in my face. You are going to be, you're going to be repulsed by what I'm going to say. I want you to hear it, though. It is completely true. It is completely biblical, and yet it feels so wrong, but I'm going to throw it out there and resist the urge to take off your shoes and throw them at me, okay? Hear me all the way out. Give me a chance. Can't we all get along? Okay, great. Here we go. <clears throat> Most of what happens is not God's will. Heretic. Shoes off. Throw them at him. Most of what happens is not God's will, but... Most of what happens is not God's will, but everything that happens is God's will. Right. Amen. Preach it, Ingraham. Thank you. <laughs> now, some of you believe that everything that happens is God's will, and that's true. And it's not true. And it's not true. It's totally false. If you believe that everything that happens is God's will, then you will be a prayer pacifist. You will be unable to battle mightily in prayer because you think that whatever God's going to do, God's going to do. Whatever happens is what is going to happen. It was always going to happen. And, and so whatever happens is just God's will. And it is. But it's not really. Most of what happens is not God's will, but everything that happens is God's will. Okay, Ingraham, what are you talking about? You're starting to sound like some of the passages in the Bible here. Right, I am starting to sound like, because that's where I'm going to go with this. Jesus, Jesus is going to clarify. I'm going to take you to Jesus here. In fact, actually, I'm going to take you to a passage where Jesus is teaching about prayer. He is intentionally teaching on prayer. He's telling his disciples how to pray so that things change, how to pray like him so that things shift. 
And he's like, what should his disciples be praying if they want to be mighty in prayer so that their prayers are answered? This is straight from the Lord's Prayer. And Jesus drops this line for how to pray to see your prayers answered in the Lord's Prayer. And he says, Matthew 6, 10, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This partial sentence captures the very essence of what we are attempting to do in prayer. That is at the very heart of effective prayers. In prayer, we are asking that God's will is done on earth like God's will is done in heaven. Why do we pray that? Because God's will isn't usually done on earth in the same way that his will is done in heaven. They are different, God's will as it is in heaven versus God's will what it is on earth. There are two definitions of God's will right here in the Lord's Prayer, and you know that they're not the same because Jesus is saying that we should be praying that the, God's will is done on earth like it is in heaven. All prayer warriors need to understand that Jesus is teaching there's two God's will, wills. There is God's ideal, and then there's what God allows. It's called permissive. But, but God, what God's allowed, they are not the same thing. I've drawn it out for you. My drawing's impeccable. Impeccable drawings. Okay, look at this drawing. Wow. Ingraham, wow. Seriously. So in heaven, the, the line there, that's God's ideal will. In heaven, everything happens without sin, perfect goodness, perfect holiness. There is not a a shadow of darkness in what happens in God's ideal will being done in heaven. The bottom line is God's will on earth. It is far away. It's different than God's will in heaven. Sometimes it's closer up towards what God's will is like in heaven. Sometimes it's further away than, than how God's will is, is done in heaven. But the, the most important thing is they're not the same. They're not the same thing. God's ideal will versus what he allows on earth. There is a significant variance between what God ideally wants and what he allows to take place on earth. On earth, we don't see the ideal happen. Instead, we see the allowed will of God, and we read all about the allowed will of God and how it moves up and down in passages such as Romans chapter 1, where God will hand people over to more evil, more depravity, more evil, more depravity. He'll hand them over, and sometimes he will restrain what evil is allowed. Sometimes he will relax that more evil is allowed, that he adjusts what is permitted on earth in, in the levels of evil. Okay? So... There is, there is no allowed evil taking place in heaven, in, in God's throne room presence. Only his ideal, but on earth he allows to happen, which is not his ideal, but he allows it. That's why I say most of what happens is not God's ideal will on earth. But everything that happens is God's allowed will. Are we tracking? So what are we doing in prayer? Well, here, here's, here's where the drawing becomes amazing, right? We add, that's prayer. That's what we're doing in prayer. Our aim in prayer is to pray that more of God's ideal will is taking place on earth that is in heaven. We, we pray that that lower line, the, the God's will on earth, is more like it's moving upwards towards God's ideal as it is in heaven. That God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven, pulling that line up in situations, in our cities, in our context. Very often we get consumed with paralysis when it comes to prayer and the thought of, the thought of is this God's will? What I'm praying for? How would I know if this is God's will? Most of the time, it's actually a pretty simple question to ask. Most of the time, you can just think, is what I'm asking God to do in this situation, moving this situation from here towards God's absolute heavenly ideal? I'm, I'm making up a statistic here. I'm going to say 80%. I have no idea. 80%, completely fictional, made up on the spot, um, sense of, of, of the amount of prayers we can easily assess is this God's will by, is it shifting things more towards how it is in heaven? A person's suffering. There's no suffering in heaven. I would like it to be less suffering in this person's life. 
that this person is in an evil context situation. There's no evil context in heaven. I want to see them rescued out of that. I'm praying for things to be more like God's ideal in heaven. I'm trying to get things to align. That is what we are doing when it comes to prayer. Now, God's will is not the only factor. we got to make sure we hold on to that. God's will is not the only factor when it comes to prayers being answered. We may pray for someone res- being rescued out of an evil situation, and it doesn't happen right away, or for someone to be healed of some situation, and, or some suffering, or whatever. God's will is important when it comes to answered prayer, but there are other factors, and yet still it's the starting point for us. It's the starting point for, for mighty praying. The vast majority of prayers can be quickly assessed. Are we asking for the situation in our lives to move closer to God's heavenly ideal, his pure ideal, his holy ideal? And if the answer is yes or probably, then pray your guts out. Then then go to war. Pray your guts out and don't overthink it too much. Some people think that there is a specific right for each situation. But remember, in God's will here on earth, there's kind of a flexible zone where it moves up and down. We're kind of in a, in, a, in heaven, there's a, a, a completely ideal, unmoving line. Uh, there, we're kind of in a flexible zone. And so our, we're just trying to get things to move towards the heavenly ideal direction. So don't overthink of it. Just, don't overthink it. Just, just pray. Okay, so I'm praying, let's say. And it doesn't happen. Okay, does that mean it was not God's will? Okay, you cannot know if something is or is not God's ideal will based on it not happening or happening. There, there's other factors out there. There's, there's more factors, but it's our starting point. So you pray, you keep praying for, for things to get better, more ideals and, and all that. You're praying that God's will is done on earth like God's will is done in heaven. So that covers, I'm fictionally making up 80%, 80% of our prayer situation, but that definitely does not cover all of our prayer situations. There are some situations which are a lot more confusing, and you, you, you don't actually know intuitively right away what does God want. Does God want this or that? Um, you know, so we want to know, like, how do we go about discerning if your prayer is, is in alignment with God's will or if it's not? For me, like, if it comes to hiring somebody or buying a church building or, or um, you, know, the, you know, the things that we do around here, you know, that, that, that sort of a thing, uh, like shifting this situation to that situation, strategic stuff. Uh, when it comes to, like, God, what do you want for our church? What do you want for this role? What do you want for leadership? What do you want in this decision? Um, how do we seek to understand, perceive, confirm And discern what God's will is in a situation so that we can pray in alignment. My first comment on this is, I just want you to pray for what you want, first of all. As you discern the process, just start praying for what you want. And then be willing to shift on the way, but start praying for what you want. Be bold, ask loudly, go for it in prayer, be passionate, be persistent. Go for it until you get a no from heaven. Keep praying and and pray for you want as you start your discernment process ask. Now, I, I, there's so much that I want to teach about when it comes to discernment. My comments today are going to be really brief. Um, I have read a lot of books on this. I have been focusing and growing on this for years and years. I have over 500 journal entries of seeking and discerning process and, and, and kind of wrestling with decisions over the last couple of years. Um, th- there's, there's nothing more powerful than somebody who grows in discernment and, and also uh, grows in wisdom. When you can take discernment and and bring wisdom to discernment, it is just a powerful, powerful, beautiful thing. But on the topic of growing uh, in discernment, because I don't have enough time to talk much about it today, uh, I recommend this book, James Gold's book. It is The Discerner, which is about hearing, confirming, and acting on prophetic revelation. I have many more books that I could recommend, but I find this one is a pretty decent starting point when it comes to this topic. So again... If you're like, I need to grow in discerning, this book could help you take another step. And I, again, I encourage you to go on this life-changing journey, how to hear from God, to discern what he's saying. But, but these next comments that I'm going to make are going to be need, needfully short just because of time. Here's, here's five things I want to say. Firstly, 
in order to hear from God about what he wants in a situation, you need to believe he still speaks to those who seek him. That's a starting point in, in in our generation. Not everybody is there. But one of the roles of the Holy Spirit, says Jesus in John chapter 14, 15, and 16, is to give this kind of counsel, to give this kind of direction, to give this kind of guidance. If, you, if, you want, if you're theologically at a point where you're like, I'm not sure God speaks to me, uh, I do have some book re- recommendations, and if you don't remember what I'm saying right now, you can ask Ruth afterwards. Uh, can You Hear Me by Brad Jerzak is, is a good starting point. There's also, um, James Gull also has a book, but that might be good enough. To, she'll, she'll remember that one. Can You Hear Me as a starting point. But yeah, when you're coming to discern, you've got to believe that God still speaks and guides and leads. That's piece number one. Secondly, uh, have a place to record everything that might be from God. Have a place to record everything that might be from God. Uh, in my experience, hearing from God about complex situations is a lot like building a mosaic. Here's a picture of a mosaic. You know what a mosaic is? Uh, this it happens to be in Madaba, Jordan. A uh, beautiful church mosaic, a map of all the Holy Land. It's, it's pretty incredible. But anyways, in a mosaic, you've got different pieces, lots of different pieces, different colors, different shapes, different sizes, and you get them all together, and they get assembled, and they make a picture, or in this case, they they make a map. They make a map. When I'm in a serious discernment process, I will record everything, every little potential piece, every dream, every verse that comes to mind while I'm praying, every word that I receive from different people, every feeling that I have while praying about the situation, every impression, every thought that comes to my mind, every song that is in my heart while I'm trying to pray and it seems to be distracting me, when it's coming to mind, everything. I will get everything written down on the days as I'm going through a seeking process and discernment process. Why? Because not everything is God's leading. Definitely. Not everything that I'm thinking or feeling, but if I get it all down and I start praying through all the pieces, I can start zooming back and see if God's, if if there's a mosaic coming together, a picture, a map, or things like that as I prayerfully go through it. There's going to be pieces that were nothing. They were just there. It was a rock, not a piece of marble, or whatever the case may be. That, that's part of the discernment process. So you've got to write everything without filtering it first. You don't know. In, in God's, in, with God's temple, they rejected the cornerstone, the capstone. They didn't know what it was, and they just didn't think it fit. It was, it was the most important piece. You've got to get them all down. You get them all down first. You need to have a place where you write everything down, filter later. Thirdly, be aware that God might be speaking in different ways than you prefer or feel comfortable with. Man, this is irritating. I like to feel like God is speaking to me in the ways that I feel most confident hearing from him. But, but he wants us to grow and change and stretch and all that kind of stuff. I, I wish it was different, but this is just how it is. I alluded to this for a moment ago, but it took me ages to realize that I was pleading with God on a prayer walk to, to answer and give me understanding about a situation, but I had this pesty song that kept invading my mind, and I'm like, why am I being in, why is this getting in my head? And I was like, get, uh, get this is annoying. Oh, it's the answer. Oh, I thought it was a distraction, but it was discernment. And, and so often we got to be aware that there's just different, different things that are going, going on there. So we want to be attentive that God might be speaking in different ways that we feel comfortable with. I don't usually feel comfortable saying to people, oh, yeah, trust your feelings about this. Uh, feelings can be wildly out of control, but God sometimes does use feelings. I feel that this isn't right. Sometimes it's us, sometimes it's God, but writing it down and filtering it, filtering it later. It's part of that piece. It's part of the mosaic, okay? Uh, fourthly, uh, intentionally pray for confirmation to come through other people. I very often, I'm getting shameless about this one, go to prophetic people and I ask them to pray and I just stand there. No, 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 no. Let's pray now. You're not going to go, don't go away and pray. Let, let's just do this now. And, and then I want you to tell me if you, if you hear something from God and I'll write it down. It may be right, it may be wrong. It's going to be part of my prayer mosaic, my, my discernment mosaic, right? But eagerly, I, I know how confusing it can be to try and hear from God for itself. It, it, um, I don't know, we're in a body of Christ. And those who don't trust the body, they're, they're being cut off by most of things. 
And, and so, like, it, it, when you're trying to seek God for understanding about things, it, it, that's, that's part of our relationship with him. But when somebody else is, is praying and seeking for your life, that is part of their gift and part of them being a part of the body of Christ. Sometimes it's easier for people to hear and speak in because it just works differently uh, theologically and spiritually. But anyways, so I intentionally pursue that and build this mosaic piece. Uh, be alert, record everything. Five, fifthly, always asking if it's biblical and for uh, Bible confirmation. I might seek Bible stories or passages that confirm what I feel like God might be saying in the process just so I can see like, oh yeah, this is within the realm of what God does. This is the kind of guidance God gives. God is in this kind of way. Now, that's not always the foolproof plan. The enemy uses scripture as well, and I understand this. We are building a mosaic. We're, building a, a, uh, we're collecting the pieces, and we are in a discernment process. Now, there's a lot more that I could say about this, but as hard, it's not as hard as it seems. <laughs> God wants you to hear from him. He does actually say that those who seek him find him when they seek him with all their heart. Those who, those who pursue understanding, he, he's not, he's not um, trying to keep you in the dark. He wants, he wants you to know what he wants. He wants you to be praying in alignment with his will. He wants to have you walk the, the way that he wants you to walk. He's not trying to hold back there. Um, it, it's, it's probably a growth area for a lot of us. Now, I need, to, um, I need to wrap this up, um, but one reason for unanswered prayer or delayed answered prayer has to do with alignment with God's will, has to do with alignment with God's will. When we determine, though, that what we are praying is within the scope of what God would allow and, and might be allowing, then we are allowed to lean in in prayer we are allowed to increase our passion and our faith and our, 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 our earnestness as we start battling in prayer because there's other factors at play, but that gives us a mighty foundation to start bombarding heaven more effectively, more effectively. And then plus, when we determine it is within the will of God, our faith can go up. That's significant. We'll talk about that piece next week. Um, I have a picture for you this week. I almost forgot the picture. I know that my plan was to have pictures, um, this, is, this is the prayer picture for this week. All right? The, the, the God's will bit, as it connects to prayer, is like the roots of the tree. No roots, that tree ain't going anywhere. That, no roots, that tree is not going to be strong and mighty. In the same way with prayer, if you are not rooted deeply in grasping that this is in the realm of God's will, your prayer life is not going to have any, any uh, might behind it. It will fall over easily. It won't probably even grow anywhere. A lot of times, our prayers just fizzle out because they're not anchored in. I think God's ideal for this situation might be this. And if we don't ad address this first question, our prayer life, our, our prayers over a situation will never be as strong as they ought to be. This is the first, the first question. Mighty prayers are deeply rooted in grasping whether this is in alignment with God's will or not. Okay, that's the picture. Almost forgot. The challenge for this week is thus. Assess. Is your most important prayer request moving a situation towards God's ideal? If so, lean in more fiercely, praying God's will to be done in that situation more as it is in heaven. Some of your situations are more complex, and you can work through that discernment process. But yeah, let's, let's keep working these, these prayer requests. In fact, I want to pray that you would get understanding in that. Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, through the Holy Spirit, which you give us for moments just like this, I ask for revelation, I ask for understanding, I ask for guidance about our prayer requests. God, we ask to know your will in these situations that are on our hearts and in our prayers. We ask you to uh, confirm clarify, bring great clarity in what your will is in these situations in our lives, God. We ask for you to hear our prayers when they are in alignment with your will and that things would definitely, obviously, immediately shift 
in direct answers to our prayers. God, uh, be extra attentive right now as we seek to grow, as we seek to step out in this. Teach us, speak clearly, in Jesus' name, amen.